Oh, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. You know, it's like, I'm sure Detective Sergeant Sam Speed will be asking where the microwave is to uh, every, a huge, huge fan of Miranda. Um, she is still on my my top of my list to play Doctor Who someday. So fingers crossed that uh, she'd be amazing. I think she would. Yeah. I think, of course, we'd have to bring you in as the master. But this is a, a panel for another day. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Tom, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. Um, but I'm sure I'll, I'll cope. Ah, uh, we will. We will get you go through it. Well, Tom Leslie, welcome to the GalaxyCon virtual stage. Uh, our team right now is going through the chat room, pulling out the questions for us. In the meantime, I would just like to throw this out. How did Lucifer begin for each of you? You go, Tom. Uh, it was um. A load of scripts for lots of different things, and all of them seemed like the same script. And then this one script called Lucifer seemed very, very different and a lot of fun. And a, and a character at the center of it that I was like, oh my gosh, after about three pages, I really, really, really want to play this guy. So um, I went and met Len Wiseman, who was directing it, and thankfully he also agreed that I should play that guy. So um, that's pretty much how it started. And then it just that was the beginning of a So it's a, a cinch like that. Oh, yeah, you're the guy. You're the guy. Um, <laughs> it, it weirdly was a little bit that way, but that's like it's taken me 20 years to get to that point, though. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. It, ta it takes that long to become an overnight success, as we all know in this business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But absolute kudos, uh, absolute kudos to everyone who involved in that creative decision to... Uh, it's... It's taken us here, and you're absolutely right. What an amazing ride it has been. So, oh, good. Um, no, I was going to say, has, go on, go on, LA, you to that. Just, uh, like, I'm, I'm... <laughs> no, Leslie, how, yeah, how did, uh, it was how did... the same, it was the same thing, except I didn't, it wasn't the, you're the, you're the one. <laughs> and in one week, I tested for three shows, uh, loose for being one of them. Um, didn't get any of them. So Lucifer actually originally casted another actress to play Mazikeen and they had a table read, I guess, where um, the powers that be decided that they were maybe that they hadn't maybe felt. <laughs> They've made the wrong choice. They've made the wrong choice. And, um, and then I got one of those calls at a photo shoot where it's like, hey, we're we in safe. At the end of that week just being like what am i doing here you know um and i really like tom i read the pilot and i i i actually sent a message to jeff johns i was like oh my gosh this is an hilarious but very well versed in the dc comic you know vertigo or any of the comic books really so um oh, no, don't I'm worry excited. jeff johns is <laughs> <laughs> i was very i was very excited i was very happy to join um the show uh, again, it it was it was a, it was a delight to see you in action. It was a delight to see the, the the character arc and the ups and downs and the the journey and the journey both of your characters really did. And uh, and we'll yeah yeah uh, no spoilers about uh, about uh, uh, on the horizon. But absolutely, we're looking looking forward to see what uh, what the future has in store for all of us. Yeah, indeed. Mm -hmm. Well, both characters have gone like full evolution, really. In yeah. the show, which is which is um I don't think either myself or Leslie would have thought that when we first read this script, like that that's the journey that they would have sent us on. But yeah. um yeah. And at times our stories kind of merge mirror each other's, you know. Yeah. Um our parental issues, our <laughs> relationship issues. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Absolutely. Uh, what is, uh... and, and a feeling of like maybe you're not worthy, you know. Um, yeah, very similar. Yeah. What's uh, what's the best memory you're you're gonna take from uh, being a part of Lucifer? Oh my gosh! I mean, I think that um, it's not very often that you do something that sort of that takes hold like this and and really captures people and people's imagination. I think you always hope when you start a job that that might be the case. Yeah. Um, but you just you just never know. Um, but I think that oh God, there's so many memories to take away from this. I think the group of people that we worked together with, 
is you know was very special um and we have a, a very special connection with each other because of the journey that we all went on together because behind the scenes it wasn't always smooth sailing um and uh you know, I think our interaction with our fans, to be quite honest, has been like a huge part of what this experience has been as well, and the fans saving the show. And, um, you know, we you got 50% more, 100% more episodes than you would have got if the, if the fans hadn't watched it, basically. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I think, for me, it's also seeing a character from beginning to end, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, having, it's rare now that a show does six seasons and you get to finish it the way you want to um and you get an opportunity to do to do a noir episode where you're playing different characters or a musical episode or you know um so I, that and i and and then i think also just you know as tom said the the group of people and the kind of families that we made with our crew you know we are so we are so incredibly close to our crew and I was always really proud of people who day played or guest stars who came in and said, I heard that this is such a fun set to work on. It runs really lovely. And that made me feel good because we've all been on the opposite side where we're guests on another show and it's not that welcoming and it, it sort of makes it hard to do your job. So I was very proud that that was our reputation. I would absolutely concur. And I concur you about the noir episode. I've, I've been saying for years that you could do a uh, black and white noir, you know, it's like a classic gumshoe without all that. And the, the, uh, the costumes and, and the photography in that episode was just beautiful. Yeah. And those outfits must've been fun to wear. Oh Mine, my gosh, not it. so much. <laughs> 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 I was like, I'm just going to sit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you looked amazing though. <laughs> what better, right? Well, there are we so much fun shooting that. It was ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, because it was so different to the way that we normally shoot an episode of Lucifer as well. So it was just a whole ex different experience for everybody, really, including the crew. Everyone was everyone was giddy with excitement about it. And that was the episode that everyone really wanted to watch when it came out. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for indulging my questions. We have some for our audience. So let's go ahead and roll to our first one. And here's one from Sylvia, who wants to know... <sighs> Who were your celebrity crushes growing up? Oh, wow. You guys are going to laugh at me, but it was Jean Claude Van Damme. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not laughing. I'm like, I'm in, I'm, I'm in quiet appreciation with you. Ha, 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 <laughs> that blood sport or like. Blood sport. Ha, <laughs> handsome, athletic, and flexible. Yeah. I used to have this poster of him doing the splits across the kitchen counter, like above my bed. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> uh, Tom, uh, who is yours? <sighs> Mine. Mine was um, I don't not 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 everyone in America knows who this is, but Kylie Minogue was mine. Yes, Kylie Minogue when she was in she was in a, an Australian soap opera called Neighbours before she was a famous pop singer, and uh, I used to watch Neighbours with my sisters all the time, and she um, she played Charlene, um, and she married she married uh, Jason Donovan's character Scott, uh, and um, I just had a huge crush on her because she was a bit of a tomboy. And she had, uh, she wore like, um, I had a poster on my wall of her in these kind of like denim dungarees with like a bit of, with a bit of oil. Bill smeared across her face and then the big curly hair. <laughs> and I was just like, that's, that's her, that's it. That's my crush right there. Fair, awesome. Um, Sylvia. Cassette tape. Like I got a bread boom box for Christmas. My first tape was a Kylie Minogue. Was it? Yeah. Oh my gosh. You should be so lucky. And Jack.
and Jason Donovan. I mean, like, Jason uh, Donovan had an album called Ten Good Reasons. I remember. Remember that about him? Yeah. Yeah. We are totally. This is the two. Like. Yeah, I know. Kind of this is what happens. We basically, like, basically parents. behind the scenes, Leslie Ann and I just like reminisce about old British Commonwealth experiences. Yeah. Because Leslie Ann obviously grew up in South Africa, so we had a lot of like references that none of the Americans would get at all. <laughs> Nice, very nice. Well, feel feel free feel free to lay them on here as thick as you want because we are an international show. <laughs> and, <laughs> and Sylvia, thank you. Great question <laughs> from Gabriella. If your life had a theme song, what would it be? Oh my gosh! Right. <laughs> <laughs> I've had the week from like just like ah! and trying to be a mother. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, something to do with traveling, probably. <laughs> they call him the wanderer. Yeah, the wanderer. wanderer. It goes around and around and around, 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 around. Yeah. Thank you. Very fun question. What do we have? What job would you have done if you had not become an actor? Oh, I already had jobs before I was an actor. <laughs> I worked in sales and marketing for Red Bull, actually, and wow. I ran their hotel portfolio in New Zealand. And I was an IT recruitment consultant as well at one point in my life. I could hire you, coder, data analyst. Uh, but I think if I wasn't really, if I had a choice, it probably would have been something in like social services with, with kids. Mm. You know? I was really, I, I wanted to do that um, straight after high school actually, was to go and travel and through Africa and my father was like, I don't know that my 18 year old daughter should be <laughs> traveling alone. Sort of, um, but yeah, probably something in social services. Fair. So if you used to work for Red Bull, Red Bull gives you wings, but when you came oh. In the mini. I in the little mini license. with the, like, the Red Bull cannon. <laughs> I set my driver's license in a Red Bull mini. And like, I went to the, and you should see me pulling up there. And I was like, you guys want a free Red Bull? <laughs> Like, pass me now. <laughs> it was so yeah. fun. And I was, I did it. And then I went to my boss and I was like, I'm way too ambitious for this role. Like, <laughs> I want to work for this company and I love it and I love the brand. And then he's like, okay, he just created a role for me in the sales team. And then like told me to go to Volkswagen, bought me a new car. And I <laughs> it was like, Okay, this is happening. Like, it just, I don't know. I've had this kind of uh, career where people wanted to, they were like, all right, you're hungry, you're ambitious. Here, go for it, you know? Right on. Very nice. Glad to see people recognized it. <laughs> not, 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 and, and, and encouraged it. Not like, yeah, 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 just hand out the drinks. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's... <laughs> what, did, what did you do? What would you do, Tom? 
Um, I well, I'm, I'm I'm obsessed with sport. So basically, I I used to want to do something. Yeah, I would be a professional golfer if I was good enough. That's the thing. Like I would have loved to have been a professional sportsman, but all the sports I played, I wasn't good enough to be. You know, to go pro in any of them. Because then at least I get to run out in front of the crowd, yeah. um, <laughs> or something, something along those lines. Sports injuries and physiotherapy was, was where I was sort of aiming for before I got the acting bug. Fair. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A Tarek, you would have been a Tarek. I know exactly. No one knows. No one knows what that means. That's not one of our little references. That's the guy that Leslie Ann and I go to when we feel like we've been beaten up. You may not have yet. Ooh. Uh, well, I, I know that I, um, I started out in the theater and I love the theater. Um, and I've always wanted to, uh, do something on Broadway, which I've never done yet. Mm. So keeping it going, basically. That's my dream. <laughs> yeah. That is yeah. Dream. <laughs> every, every actor's dream is, yeah. is having a next gig. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, you know, I, I'd like to say I'm, I'm filling my dreams every day, you know, it sounds a bit corny, but I, um, I, I only started this 10, uh, gosh, uh, 12 years ago, you know, so it hasn't really been. Well, I mean, the first song that I kind of learned on the guitar was um, Revolution by Tracy Chapman. I do love singing that song. And again, that sits in a nice sort of vocal range for me. There you go. Yeah, I can't, can't go wrong with Chapman. No. No, she's marvelous. No, absolutely not. Ginger, thank you. Very great question. This is Robert Catherine. What has been the highlight? Yeah, go for it. Go for it. I mean, God, there's so many, but I think I have to go back to the pilot when we're shooting the pilot and thinking about, you know, uh, I think the first like five days of the pilot, we did a night shoot. Um, and we were shooting on, on Hollywood Boulevard mm. and we had it closed off for, for us. And it was right, literally where they have the red carpet for the Oscars, opposite the Dolby Theatre. That's where we were shooting. And it was a little bit like, I can't believe this is happening. It was a real, I was just having like a pinch me moment every time because it just felt like this little kid from Sheffield <laughs> was like <laughs> dressed up in a nice suit in, in Hollywood and like, the name of the show and all that sort of stuff. It was all, all these kind of things. To the very first time you are in Lux, you know, when you're seeing Lucifer and um, I, David Bowie had passed, I think like a week or something before, mm. a few days before, and we had fame playing. The way I felt when I worked in New York and I was like, wow, I'm shooting in New York, you know, like just, you're grateful um and it was such a big we were shot in an action in, in a real club so yeah. it wasn't the replicated you know lux version it was like real there were lots of people there was no covid <laughs> everyone was hot and sweaty and sexy and i believe I, there was a there was a snake as well at some point i remember walking yeah. past and there was a snake around like they were in the britney spears toxic video yeah. and i was like wow this is crazy <laughs> and then they're like and leslie ann so now he's gonna go down and <laughs> Patrick, this is your intro into the show. That's right. <laughs> you were being looked after, weren't you? I was. Can't <laughs> complain. Uh, uh, Catherine, thank you very much. Great question. What do we have next? Here's one from Maria. Oh, what is your biggest fear? <sighs> this is going to be so dark, but it's like 
you know, I think it's that parent thing of just anything horrific, anything happening to your child. Mm -hmm. um, outliving my child, I think, is my biggest fear. Yeah. I can't really, I can't really, I was going to go with heights, but I'm going to, yeah. <laughs> but I'm probably going to say echo what Le as Le Leslie Ann just said, because it's, yeah, it, I mean, as a parent, I think it just goes straight to there, doesn't it? Yeah. That's a big <laughs> I've never done it. Never. Twice, skydived, <laughs> glided, been in an aerobatic plane, you know, with literally a joystick and they're like, here's the ground. Barrel, and, the know, barrel rolls and, and all said, that. I said to the guy, I was like, just do everything. I'll never do anything. <laughs> just go crazy. And he's like, ah, ah, ah. For any role, any time. I mean, weirdly, I get braver when the camera's rolling. Like there was yeah. a scene in Luther last year when I had to put my hand in a bag and just grab a snake. Nice. Ooh. Ooh. Which which Disney character would you like to be? Oh my gosh. Maleficent. Oh. <laughs> I think I am who. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got the big headpiece? Uh, I don't know. I'm not really a Disney person, I have to say. I didn't grow up on that, on Disney characters. Uh, you strike me as a Disney princess, Elaine. Uh, yes, very much so. I have never even been to Disneyland. Oh, my gosh. It's um, it's yeah. I go for the teacups. As as I, 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 I was an actor at Disney World for thirteen years, and uh, oh my it's, it's it's worth going to. It's worth going to at least once in your life, especially when your kids reach that magic age of about six and seven. That's the good year when they're not scared of everything and they're wondrous or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Nice. No, so uh, the cars ride's great as well, by the way. Oh oh yeah, really, the cars ride is great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, well, I'm going to let you into a little secret. I auditioned and got very close to um, playing the part of Gaston in uh, Beauty and the Beast that my, my friend Luke Evans actually ended up playing. Um, and I really wanted it at the time just because I loved the original cartoon so much and he was such yeah. a like, douche, and it, but yeah. funny douche. Yeah. And I was just like, I really, 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 really wanted to do that. So that... That that's probably it. That that uh, that ship has sailed. Um, but my my good friend Luke has got it, so I don't mind. Yeah, I, I you would I could totally see how you've been a very very strong contender for that. Absolutely. <laughs> just, <laughs> uh, just a lot. It's so much fun, and the songs were so funny, and yeah, yeah. yeah. And it, all Josh Gad had already been cast in it, so it would have been like, oh, it'd been fun. Anyway, yeah. I ended uh, up doing a show called Lucifer. Have you ever heard of that? Yeah, yeah. It's it's yeah, it's cute. It's cute. <laughs> Ah, uh, that showbiz. Grace, thank you. Great question. What we have next from Hannah. Who broke character the most <laughs> on the set? <laughs> and I assume in an amusing, funny way, crack up, whatever. Yeah. I mean, it's got to be Lauren. It, oh, it has to be Lauren. <laughs> but because it's always like, who's least like their character is Lauren. Yes. And yeah. so, uh, yeah. Because, like, yes. cause, Chloe's kind of like the straight the straight guy in a double act kind of thing, you know, very kind of like, and the gravity of the show. But off when the camera isn't rolling, Lauren is bonkers and hilarious and funnier yeah. than all of us put together. And I don't know if you guys noticed, but gradually as the show goes on, more of Lauren seeps into Chloe, like mm -hmm. her mannerisms, her eye, like yeah. all of that. It's all <laughs> Lauren. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Yeah. yeah. Very nice. Uh, all right. So uh, we know we have to we have to get them back here at the Galaxy Con virtual stage. All right, Anna, thank you. Very fun. What we have next from Claire. Hmm. Any pre or post uh shooting rituals you may use to get into your character? Uh drinking. Hmm. Yeah, fair. But, but, but... Tom, you said that so seriously. I know. <laughs> you know. I'll try to give it the deadpan. Yeah, drinking. 
Um, mm -hmm, interesting, interesting. I use music quite a bit. Yeah, but I think me and LA both use music. We annoy other people with our music there, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically yeah. playing playing music to get us into moods and stuff. Yeah, sure. And I always like, God, anytime I went into the makeup trailer, I'd want to put music on because yeah. I couldn't bear the sort of silence and the, the hair dryers and the muttering. I yeah, just can't like, want people to get going. That's a bummer about COVID, you know, is that we weren't able to have that morning kind of yeah. ritual in the trailer with everyone. Yeah. Um, but yeah, music for sure. Definitely for the like the emotional stuff, you know. There's always a song that triggers something, some memory, something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. Very nice. Clara, thank you. Very nice question. What we have next from Mark. What was your favorite therapy scene? Ooh. <laughs> I think, um, I think for me, it was probably in season one, actually. And I think it's, I think it's episode five of season one. Um, it's the first time that Lucifer kind of like breaks the charm in front of Linda. And she says something that really gets under his skin about being the devil. Yeah. And, and um, you can see for the first time this kind of like, is it, there's a moment of danger between the two of them. And she thinks that maybe she's pushed it too far as well. But yeah, I think that that scene for sure. And then tied in with the scene when I show her my face in season two. Mm. For sure. Yeah, that's a like, great scene when you show the yeah. face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Um, oh, gosh. Oh, sorry. My phone's ringing. Let me turn it off. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's going great. You're fine. Yeah, keep, yeah, keep going. <laughs> uh, I would probably say... Maybe one of my faves was um, where you and I do therapy together that, that time after we just beat the shit out of each other. Um, oh, yeah. Um, you mm. know, and there's like a realization that Lucifer has like, oh, shit, I, I didn't tell her that I wouldn't leave her. You know, I just assumed she would know and kind of seeing Maze's vulnerability. Um, but... Yeah, that was a very, very, that was a very sweet scene. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah, I concur. Mary, thank you. Lovely question. What do we have next from Evelyn? Was there any scene you found uncomfortable for any reason? Oh my gosh. <clears throat> Someone's really trying to get a hold of me, and I don't know what that's all about. Mm. Um, sorry, guys. Uh, no worries. Is there any scene? Uh, a cut roll for any reason. And this includes effects. Maybe you're in the harness. Maybe you had the makeup on. Oh my gosh! I will tell you that the scene where we shot there's a dream sequence where Chloe falls off the balcony and Lucifer sort of dive bombs, and I, I had to kind of I was hung upside down uh, with this harness on with a big green screen behind me and this huge like wind cannon blowing at me and shouting and and I was in that position for probably a good couple of minutes. <laughs> Oh. So when I got down, I, I just I didn't feel normal for about an hour afterwards. It was really yeah. crazy. Yeah. But um, yeah, probably that. Fair. Is there anything I felt uncomfortable with? <clears throat> I mean, just the general cold because she doesn't really wear much, you know, <laughs> like Vancouver. <laughs> trying oh, yeah. To yeah. I mean, at night when you're like. Hey, it's LA, and you're like, no, it's minus twelve. Like, <laughs> um, yeah, it was pretty. Was that that was probably uncomfortable? Like Vancouver winter, trying to trying to replicate Los Angeles. Yeah, trying to replicate. Yeah. I was always, I just yeah. constantly being cold and like finding old hand warmer things like in every jacket I owned. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that I'll do it. Evelyn, thank you. Fun one. What do we have next? From Nikita, do you share any traits with your Lucifer character? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, we both, me and, me and Lucifer both love a pun. And uh, <laughs> one may have fed the other there, but like I kind of, um, yeah, he's kind of like his love of like choke, uh, jokes and cheekiness and stuff like that. That's, um, that's very much my sense of humor. Um, there you go. Yeah, I think I share a lot actually with Maze. Um and I and I think it's exactly what, what Tom just said before you touch on, like all your characters are filtered through you, right? So um her experience of like trying to figure out humanity was very much my experience of trying to figure out at 17 New Zealand, you know, when I immigrated or 
um, finding my way here in America 10 years ago, I always say I played it like an immigrant from hell, you know, um, mm. just trying to sort of suss everyone out and, and figure it out. And I think her fire is definitely, I, you know, I have that. Um, um, and her compassion, you know, for people and kind of, um, uh, seeing an injustice and, and like, and saying something or, or doing something. I share that with her for sure. Sure. Absolutely. Great. And Nikita, thank you. Very fun question. What do we have next? From uh, Kishma. Hope I pronounced that right. What advice would you give to your 18 year old self? You just <coughs> have life figured out. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, what advice would I give my 18 year old self? Gosh, so much. <laughs> so much advice. Um, but I would, I would kind of strongly encourage them that, to believe. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. when others around you kind of are maybe suggesting that you should move on to other things, I think believing, I would advise them to believe. Believe in yourself. Yeah. 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 That's good advice for any 18 year old. Definitely. Kishba, thank you. Nice question. What we have next from. Uh, Josen, how much of your characters will keep living in you <laughs> in future projects? Oh my mm. gosh. I think we put it to bed when the show finishes, you know? Um, I think you always put a bit of yourself into every character. Um, but I think, you know, I, I would like to think that Mazakin exists on Lucifer in our version, and there's actually a new Mazakin on the Sandman series that Neil Gaiman's doing that I'm very excited to see, and you know, I Indeed. cheer the production and the actress on very well because we took a very small sliver of the mm -hmm. world and created our own version. But I think I personally would love to leave her there. Um, sure. um, and the, the gift of doing what we do for a living is that we get to then take on, you know, something new, something else, you know, tell a different story. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that is that is the, that is the lovely thing. It's weird. I've I've, um, I've just started getting my head into a new script of a new job that I'm doing, and um, it's very difficult. Like doing it out loud, I was like, "Oh God, you sound like Lucifer." Like I'm just trying to sort of shake off some habits of, of, yeah. of like, the last six years, basically. <clears throat> but um, you know, like like as Anne's saying, it's like it's it's lovely to be able to put them to bed and start afresh. Um, and, um, you know, start from the very beginning with the character again. Yeah. That's, really, that's a really fun, you know, that's, that's fun for an actor. Re the rehearsal room and all that sort of stuff. Very much. Very much so. Those opening reads. Jocelyn, thank you. Fun question. I think we have time for one, maybe two more. Let's see what we got. What do we got here? From Alita. How many takes did it get today to get through a scene on Lucifer? <laughs> Depends on the scene. <laughs> yeah, on the that's a that's a pretty. Yeah, that, that it really depends. Is. Depends on the scene, and also like the type of like shot that you're doing. So, for example, in the last season, Leslie Ann had this, and I, I, I would say Leslie Ann and I, but it was Leslie Ann. I was just behind her, throwing people that she'd already like finished with. But like, we did a scene that was a big stunt scene um, to go and find um, Vincent, and. You know, we try to do that in one shot. Well, we did do it in one shot. Um, you know, and so that if you're doing something in one shot, then you try to do it on a stunt as few times as possible. But you may well end up you ha you have to do it till you get it right because you're only going to use it one the one thing. Whereas if you're doing a scene that has lots of like different moving parts to it and you're shooting lots of different parts to it, you might only do one or two takes on different sizes because you're not you know in the edit that you're not going to use them. So. Yeah. Um, you know, it just it just depends really um, yeah. on what the scene is. And it depends also how funny the scene is because sometimes <laughs> you get the giggles. Or not even not even it's it, it, the the scenes that are funny are not always the ones that are the ones that you're laughing your way through. Yes, sometimes, yeah, that, yeah. Sometimes you're really tired and like you're doing a scene that is not a funny scene at all, but for some reason something's happened or whatever. I I remember shooting a scene with shooting a scene with Lauren. And Coleman Domingo, who guested as Father Frank in the first season, mm. and um, we 
we did a scene in a church and it was a scene about an investigation. It was nothing to do with comedy. And we could not, for the life of us, get through this scene without, if, we, if one of us looked at the other person, we just went. Um, so it's just like, you know, <laughs> for so many reasons, but normally exhaustion. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, that's always a fun way. Aletta, thank you. Very fun question. I think we have time for one more quick one. Let's see if we can go on a really fun one. And here's one from Steve. Do you have a favorite line from Lucifer, from your character or another character? Ah, oh, I like that caveat. Ah. I always love to speak of the me. <laughs> yeah, speak of the me. Oh, my me was so funny. Oh, my, oh, my me. me. <laughs> I made that one up. Did yeah. You? Yeah, uh, that happens quite a lot on this one. Yeah, the, the <laughs> juice, the juice that lives. Yeah. Uh, mm -mm -mm. I don't know. I I don't. I think yeah. Oh my me was was pretty. We I mean we chuckled after this like big fight and you know Chloe almost dying and good versus evil uh, war and then. Just that little, little. <laughs> I, I I I always love I would always love Maze's uh, little scene when she's at the bar and Lucifer comes up. Says, well, I just had some fun upstairs. You're like, really? You're like, thank you. You can go. And the bartender gets up from whatever he was doing under the bar with her. Yes. <laughs> yes. I can I can tell you what he was doing, Patsy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I would love to hear it, but unfortunately, oh, uh, uh, Steve, thank you so much for a great question. And Galaxy Guy viewers, this has been my time with the cast of Lucifer, but it absolutely does not have to be yours. If you'd like to chat with our guests like I have today or purchase a personalized autograph, please sign up at galaxycon.com. And while you're there, please check out our schedule of upcoming events just like this one. Leslie and Tom, this has been an absolute delight. Any final words for our audience before we go? Oh my gosh. Um... Uh, thanks for joining us, and and like I hope you've really enjoyed Five B, and I can't wait for you. This is the first convention I've done since season Five B's dropped, so um, yeah. I'm looking forward to the questions and the discussions. Awesome. Yeah, same. Thank you so much for watching. Um, from what I've read, I, I I don't think Tom and I have watched the show, but it seems that people are really enjoying it. So I'm very <laughs> grateful, um, and. Uh, yeah, thank you for supporting us for, you know, six years. Appreciate it. Well, I don't know if it uh, if it cost me my mortal soul, but it has been my absolute pleasure to serve you both today. Thank you for joining us on the GalaxyCon virtual stage. Thank you to our audience for joining us today. And thank you for those terrific questions. Hope to see you all again soon. Until then, bye-bye, everyone. Take care. And please remember that smiles are free, so spend them often. <laughs>